Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Blair and today I want to share about how to get started with selling on Facebook Marketplace. I have been in the process of doing a whole house declutter and it has been a really big, big job where I've gone through every drawer, every cabinet, every closet, every everything in our entire house and I have truly gotten rid of anything that is not being used by me or one of my family members on a regular basis. So of course, some of the things that I came across were broken or expired. You can probably hear my little girl playing outside of the door. Um, things that were broken, expired, obvious trash, of course, had to go. And then there were the items that didn't have a lot of value or didn't feel like they would be worthwhile to sell. And so those just went ahead and got donated. And then there are the items that are left, and those are all of the items that I have been selling on Facebook Marketplace. In the past week to two weeks, I have made at least $800 to $1,000 just selling unwanted items in our home on Facebook Marketplace. Some of those sales have been $200 or $100, and some of them have been as little as $5 or $7. But the reality is it all really does add up. So to first start off this video, I'm just gonna show you, this is an item, I was just cleaning out our closet, and this is an item that I am going to sell on Facebook Marketplace. It is a Dunian Burke triple zip crossbody bag purse. And it's in really good condition, as you can see. There's nothing like super obviously wrong with it. I think there's a little mark here, um, but it's really actually in really good condition, and it definitely still has a lot of life left in it. So with selling this bag, the very first thing that I'm going to go ahead and do is photograph the bag. So I like to put it somewhere where there's really good lighting. Natural light is your best friend. So you'll want to, I just have a push pin in my wall right by my front door. And I often just open up my front door because then the natural light comes pouring in and I photograph the bag. You'll want to photograph whatever item it is, multiple angles, if there are any blemishes or chips or any problems and imperfections with the item that you're selling, you definitely want to make sure to document that with a photo that's very clear and easy to see in focus, all of that. I'll make sure to include pictures of the inside of the purse and the outside, the strap, all of it. And then one thing that's also really helpful is to include, if possible, a screenshot from an online listing for the same item. So the way that I do this is I happen to know that this bag, this is the older style, but this is called the North South Zipper Bag and it's from the brand Dooney & Burke. So I'm just gonna go online and search for that and find that on their website. And I can see that currently the retail price is $82. So I always take a screenshot of that as well to include in my listing on Facebook Marketplace because it helps people to see the deal that they're getting if your item is in really good condition and then they can see the screenshot of the listing online and they see that you're selling it for say $20 and it's being listed online for $50, they're saving 30 bucks, right? Of course it is secondhand, but a lot of times secondhand stuff is still in awesome condition. So that's the next thing I do is I grab that screenshot once I have the photographs and the screenshot, I go over to Facebook Marketplace, and this is where a little bit of market research comes in super handy. Because it's helpful, if you want your items to sell fast, you need to know what to price your items at, what price point makes sense. This is where I think a lot of people get messed up. I think they price their items too high, and then people don't purchase them, and then they become frustrated with Facebook Marketplace and end up just donating the items anyway and making zero dollars. So if you're willing to have a little bit of patience and look into the item and what the price point it's selling for currently is, I think you could find that you might have a lot more success on Facebook Marketplace. So I head over to Facebook Marketplace and I search the name of the item. So here I'm searching like the Dooney & Burke crossbody north south zip bag. And it will show you the items that, that have been closest to you in, in distance in proximity first, which is helpful because in different areas of the country, different things go for different amounts. Of course, you know, the markets are different. So once you do that, you can easily see, okay, so this has gone for this much and that one's gone for that much and you can kind of find a good starting point for your item. You also have to take into consideration whether you're willing to sit with your item in your home for 
three, four months and just wait it out until someone is ready to purchase or whether you want to price the item to sell now. I am definitely more inclined to be in that latter group where I am ready to sell these items. I want them out of my house. I don't want the mental burden of having to manage them anymore or any of that. So I am like ready. I usually undercut the price and make it pretty cheap. So I'm going to go ahead and list this bag for $30. I really would normally list it for $25. And the reason why I'm listing it for $30 instead is because I'm going to put it up for $30 and I'm going to give it about 48 hours. And when I don't get any bites after about two days time, I'll go into the listing and I'll knock it down to $25 in the listing. And that can be a really powerful tool for pushing people to purchase your item when they see that you've knocked down the price. Because Facebook Marketplace actually will show the new price and then right beside it, the old price with a slash through it. So just like on any other website, marketing is super powerful. And for someone to see, oh, it used to be even more expensive than it is now, that tends to work really well. I have had a lot of success with items that have been sitting for a few days, marking them down five or 10 bucks, sometimes more depending on the price that I'm selling the item at. If I'm selling a you know $200 item, $5 doesn't make a big amount of difference. But a $30 item from 30 to 25 or from $30 to $20 feels more significant. So once you've knocked it down, I think a lot of times people are more likely to go ahead and check out. Okay, so that's the pricing. Pricing and photographs, I would say, are the two most important pieces, probably photographs being number one. I have seen some janky pictures on Facebook Marketplace. And oftentimes, I don't think the item that is being sold is in bad condition, but the photographs are so bad, I just see that item come up week after week on Marketplace when I refresh the listings in my area because no one's buying it because the pictures are so bad. So it's really important. You don't have to be a photographer. You can use your cell phone. Usually your camera on your cell phone is stellar anyway and use natural light. Natural light that's not direct is what you want. You don't wanna go put your item or stand in the sun. So if you have a patio in the shade but it's bright, that can be really helpful. Or if it's a cloudy day, that's a great time to take pictures as well. So you've gotten your pictures taken and you've put them into your listing and you've chosen your price and now you want to name the listing and you just want to use search terms that people are going to use. I've had some, I've seen before in Marketplace where someone's had this exact bag or something very similar and instead of using the name for the bag, they just call it Red Purse. The problem is that your customer, the person who's going to purchase a purse like that, most likely isn't searching on Facebook red purse. They're probably searching Dooney and Burke crossbody or crossbody bag, or some people are even searching the exact term because they know they want the north south zip. So you want to use very clear language that is good for people who are searching, not red purse. You want to put <laughs> Dooney and Burke red north south crossbody it's hard for me to think of all those words but that's like what you want to name it something that's very descriptive and easy for people to find when they're searching now moving on to all of the other little pieces like the condition it's in the material it's made out of you can fill those things out at your discretion i really feel like the interface for facebook marketplace is very very intuitive you're just working your way through the prompts. You can add a video, you can add all kinds of things to your listing, but I'm just going to talk about a pretty basic listing and just kind of show you how it works. So then at the bottom you have the option for a description. And this is another place that I see a lot of times people don't include a description or they don't include a detailed description and then I see that listing again. It just keeps coming up week after week. And I think if you would improve your photos and if you would improve your description, I think maybe it would sell. So within the description, you want to be descriptive. There's, you know, a crazy idea. So you want to explain what the product is. Talk about it in a conversational tone. So for this, I would say, this is a great purse. I've used it for traveling a few times, but it's in like new condition. It's perfect for your keys, your cell phone, and a small wallet it's lightweight, the nylon can be washed easily. I would just, you wanna sell it, right? That's, that's what you're doing, you're on a marketplace. So you wanna sell it and you really wanna use marketing style language in order for people to think, oh, that's, you know, great. 
writing that it's in excellent condition, writing that it's super great for travel, those kinds of things can really pique people's interest and think, oh, well, maybe that would actually suit my needs for the thing that I'm looking for. Also, of course, you want to include in the description if there's any imperfections, if there's, like I said earlier, chips, stains, problems, if it's appliance and some part of it doesn't work or a part of it's missing, very clearly, very, very clearly, you want to state that. And then at the very bottom of your description on your listing, it's important to put some parameters around how you are selling this item. If you're planning on shipping it, it's really simple. Facebook makes it super easy. You just choose the weight of the item and then you choose whether you want to cover the shipping out of what the buyer pays you for the item or whether they should cover the shipping separately. So it's sort of like, are you gonna give them free shipping, included shipping or not? At the bottom of every one of my listings, I write the same little blurb and I'll put it on the screen here. So I always write, unless it's not being shipped, if, if it's a large item, I get rid of the first part and it just says porch pickup. But I write shipping or porch pickup, Venmo or cash, absolutely no holds without prepayment via Venmo. If you don't tell me a specific time you're coming to pick up the item today, I will sell it to someone else unless you've prepaid. Check out my other listings too. You may think, that's a little bit snarky and a little bit strong. Yes, it is. Because I have had the experience, because I've sold so much on Facebook Marketplace at this point, where someone will say, hey, I wanna come pick up this item, and then they don't show up. And then someone else asks, can I come buy the item? And I'm like, well, I don't know if the first person still wants it or not, or I don't know what's going on with them. I try to reach out to them, they don't get back to me. So then I tell the second person, yeah, you can come pick it up. And then sure enough, two hours later, the first person's like, I'm on my way to come pick it up. Well, the second person has already picked it up. And so it's like this chaotic thing. Mm -hmm. So by putting it in the listing that, listen, I'm not holding this item for you unless you pay me, has worked so well. Because people who really want it are totally willing to jump over to their Venmo app and Venmo, usually these items are you know, 10, 20, 25, $30. There's a few of course that are more expensive, but the things that I've been selling typically are not. And so they'll just shoot me you know, $20 on Venmo and then I usually take a bright lime green sticky note and write their name on it just because I'm selling so many things right now. And I put the sticky note on the item and then I tell them, hey, let me know when you're on your way over to pick it up and then they can come pick it up and there's no issues and it's not any problem as far as who is getting the item and when they're picking it up. Which leads me to the next point of your listing. Of course, you'll wanna choose whether you're gonna do shipping or not. You definitely wanna add some kind of like how you're gonna handle it at the end, at the bottom of your description. That's what I've done. As you can see, it's worked out super well for me. And then you go ahead and publish that um, listing. Now, when you publish your listing, a really great idea is to join your local buy, sell trade groups, your buy nothing groups, if you're selling it for free or if you want people to come pick it up and haul it away themselves. You wanna join a bunch of those local kids consignment groups on Facebook because then you can post that item to all of those groups when you post it to Marketplace. So then people can find it by searching on Marketplace and they can also find it within those groups. I've had a huge amount of success with that as well. Okay, so now your listing is live and you are, let's say it's this item in particular, which I would be willing to ship. Of course, it's very small and lightweight. It would be super easy for me to package this up and ship it. And also I would be willing to sell it to someone who's local who wants to come over and do a porch pickup. So let's talk about those two different options. If someone is has purchased the item and they live across the country and I need to ship it to them, then when they check out on Facebook, I will get an email that says someone has purchased your crossbody bag and you need to ship it within three days. And then within that email, there's a link to a already created shipping label. You click on it, you click print, and it prints out the shipping label that you'll use to package up this item as well as a packing slip. And so then from there, it's just easy peasy. You want to make sure you package the item really well. So to do this, I just keep whatever like Amazon bags that come into my life. If I order from target.com, if I get any boxes, I just keep them all neatly stored in this little drawer that I have. And I recycle all of those for Facebook Marketplace. So when people order from me on there, I just use, I find a box or a bag that is the right size and it's great. It's so, so easy. So if someone ordered it for shipping, I would print out that shipping label. I would put it with packing tape on the front of a little bag. I would put this, probably wrap this up in um, 
like a Ziploc bag or something like that to protect it in case the outer bag would tear, it would still protect this, or wrap it up in tissue paper, something of that nature, just to keep it safe. If I had the dust jacket for it still, I would put that on it, but I don't. Um, and then slide the packing slip into the package and package it up, and then you just go and drop it off at your local UPS store or at USPS at your post office. Um, if it's less than one pound, if it's less than 16 ounces, you can just have your mail person pick it up without having to schedule a pickup. If it's more than that, you can just go to the USPS app or website and schedule a pickup really easy. So shipping is really no big deal. Now on the porch pickup side, so let's say someone purchased this bag and they were coming to pick it up from me. The ways that they could do that are, like I said earlier, they could prepay by Venmoing me. Let's say I sell this for $25. They Venmo me 25 bucks. I put their name on it. Let's say I sold it to someone named Susan. I put Susan's name on it on a sticky note. And then I tell her, hey, text me when you are planning on coming over and I'll make sure to set it out on the front porch. And that's that. Then when she tells me she's coming over, I shoot over my address, I put her, this into like a grocery bag usually something obviously to protect it i don't just chuck it out on my front porch and then i set it on the front porch with her name her sticky note name on the front and we have a home security system with cameras so it's really it makes it super easy because i can see when susan comes and she just picks up her bag if she's already venmoed me then it's a done deal if not then she'll just slip cash under the mat and then i'll grab the cash and move on with my life it's really truly super super simple if you're not comfortable with doing porch pickups then you could either do them at like a business if you have access to like a local business you could do a meetup where you meet up in the grocery store parking lot or something like that or you could just not do them all together and you could just ship items that are reasonable for you to ship and the rest of it you could just let it go another way you got to do what feels comfortable to you. I live in a very, very safe, small town, and 99% of the people who do have done a porch pickup from me are people who I have like 10 mutual friends with. These are good people. They're just normal. Most of them are just moms like me in the area who are picking up, you know, whatever I'm selling. So I really feel super safe about it, especially since I'm not opening my door to them. I'm not there. It's just a porch pickup. They leave the money and take the item or they Venmo me and take the item. I completely understand that that's not everyone's case. Some people live in big cities or in areas that are less safe. So maybe you don't do porch pickup or maybe you have people come and pick up from your workplace or something like that, or you meet up, like I said. There are all those different options as you're doing Facebook Marketplace. I will say people on Facebook Marketplace can be a bit tricky and sometimes frustrating. You'll find that folks will go on there and they'll ask you questions. Um, the automatic, if you're on a listing and you're interested in it and you want to message the person who has listed that item, the automatic message is, is this still available? Which is, I find pretty obnoxious because I'm like, why would they make that the automatic message? To me, if the listing is still up, it's still available because as soon as I sell it, I mark it as sold every single time, <laughs> but I guess that's not always the case. So you can, so people will say, is this still available? Is this still available? So um, that's another thing you can put in the description of your listing. If you are on top of marking it as sold, when it gets sold, you can put, if you see this listing, it is still available. I've seen people do that a lot as well. But anyway, people will ask you all kinds of questions, um, just normal. I, I'm, I'm very used to this. I've been selling online for years now, and so I'm very used to people's different kinds of questions that they have when they're purchasing online. They can't see something or hold it, you know, whatever. Um, and so you just go ahead and answer those to the best of your ability. If you don't know an answer to someone's question, you can just say, hey, I'm not sure about that. Um, but I think being friendly, using a smiley face here and there, using the person's name, not just responding like, yes, no, meh. I find that does well <laughs> with people because it makes them feel comfortable, like they can ask you questions and chat with you um, and all of that. So that's sort of from beginning to end, sort of my experience with selling on Facebook Marketplace. We have sold furniture, we have sold kids toys, we have sold clothing, I have sold a camera lens, I've sold guitar accessories, I have sold I mean, I could just go on and on. There's just been so many different things that I've sold and it has been such a great experience. I haven't really had any issues other than a few times when people don't get back to me and then they get mad at me for selling the item. But I'm like, I told you no holds. I'm not, you know, people will message me on a Monday and I will have sold it. 
you know, they'll message me on Monday that they want to buy it. And then I won't hear from them on Tuesday. I won't hear from them on Wednesday. And then someone else comes along on Thursday. And then they message me finally again, like almost a week later. It's like Saturday and they're all upset. And I'm like, uh, it's, you could have gotten back to me. If it was that important to you, you could have gotten back to me. Um, so that's sort of the overview. I hope that's helpful with getting started. Really, once you list just a couple of things, it does get so much easier because you you just realize how simple it is. And again, you can do the porch pickup or you can do the shipping or you can offer both depending on the size and scale of the item and how you want to do it on your end. But there is a real market on Facebook Marketplace. People are eager and willing to buy. Many of the items that I put up are sold within a matter of hours and many are picked up within 12 hours a day. It is a great way that I have found to make back some of the money on the items that I'm no longer using but are still in good condition and still hold some value in my home. And as I've been decluttering, it's really nice to put money back in my pocket for these things that I'm getting rid of. So I highly recommend giving it a shot. You know, I think clothing is a really great place to start because if you don't want to do the porch pickup thing or if you're just unsure about it, clothing is easy to photograph. You just put it on a hanger, hang it up on like a push pin on your wall, take some good pictures of it, you know, share a screenshot of that garment on its original website if possible. Price it low and just people will pretty much purchase it. You know, like I've had a really good luck with clothing and jackets and fleeces and things like that. So that's my experience selling on Facebook Marketplace. This is sort of a brief video just sharing what that has been like for me um, and my best tips and tricks for you. I hope that this is helpful to you. I highly recommend it. You can also find some great finds for yourself. We have been looking for a few different pieces of furniture and um, one of the pieces of furniture that we did actually purchase off of Facebook Marketplace is an authentic mid-century dresser that is beautiful. It is this beautiful wood and we use it in our back room as like a TV console. And every time I look at it, I love it. It has history, it's real solid wood, and it's such a conversation piece. And we got it off Facebook Marketplace for so much cheaper than I would have gotten it from like an antique store or something like that. So there's some really great finds on there for you as well. Anyway, my kids are starting to scream. They are with an adult out there, but I just, I'm going to wrap this video up. Hope this was helpful. All the best of luck to you selling on Facebook Marketplace. I hope you're able to make some great sales. Good luck, and I will talk to you soon.